Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode from Ampro Engineering. And yes, we are going to talk about the Tycho Bandit here. If I don't finish this soon, people are going to start send, sending me threats. Uh, <laughs> I have gotten possibly more emails for this than any other car I have ever worked on. So I do apologize. I know it's been a long project, but it's one of those things that I get burned out on incredibly fast and then get angry at it. So I think right now we can continue to move forward. As you can see in this little baggie here, we do have the transmission. I accidentally took it apart and I was promising to do this on camera, but I have to admit that it was easier than it seems. There is a press fit nut on this shaft here, which I will find in a moment. What I did is I unscrewed the transmission and I just set it in a vise. I didn't clamp it down. I just set it down so that the rear tire was just resting there. I took a small punch. I did not use a center punch because I didn't want to damage the axle. I took a small punch and just rested it on the face of the axle shaft right there, gave it one hit with the hammer and everything just came apart. The nut that resides on this car shaft is simply press fit on there. Uh, I'm probably going to reinstall it in the same way, but that's how they come apart. There's really nothing elegant about it. It's, it's quite rudimentary, but it does in fact work. So I, um, I, I do want to show you the transmissions insides, but I don't want to do that right now because what I think we need to do first is get this front end to a point where we can actually use the transmission. This means electronics. First things first, I want the servo to sit in the location where the servo should. So in this area here, then we'll throw an ESC somewhere in this area and we are simply going to use a battery pack where the original battery pack goes. The thing with this particular car here is I will need a speed control capable of supporting 9.6 volts so basically something that's going to work with 3s power shouldn't be an issue at all the servo that i think we're going to use is this power hd servo no idea what uh, what they are but it does say famous professional servo r d manufacturer <laughs> if it says famous a i guess it must be right so we'll put this in here this does appear that we are going to have to shave off all of these bosses and this little mount for the original servo but once that's done it'll be in a pretty good spot i actually wonder if i can if i can flip it around like that this in fact may be doable and if i am able to drop it in here it's either in the center or very close to center and that will uh, give us a little better steering geometry so maybe that'll work out I would never do this to a bandit that was in good shape, but as we all saw this one here, this doesn't count. It's, uh, this thing was a wreck. Okay, we'll try and cut this off. I wanna keep this post here because this post is where the original LED sat, and I'm hoping I can wire something in so that I can uh, make all that operational still, we'll see. And we'll cut this guy off here as well. These are flush cutters. And now we can drop that in. Well, that's that's fantastic. Actually, that is absolutely, this could not be better. This fits right there. I will use a pad of VHB, which stands for very high bond. It's double-sided tape. And uh, that'll, that'll be held in there permanently. I think that is gonna be perfect for this. Let's just confirm that the lid still fits. I don't see why it wouldn't, but you never know. Now that looks great whipped up a little servo horn that I think is gonna work. It's just one of those discs that I cut down. These are some Tamiya M2 shaft ball studs, and I think they're gonna work quite nicely. You can see that's turning probably more than enough. And now we're going to take some M2 threaded rod and cut it down to fit in this location here. And again, we'll use some of these little Tamiya ball cups. These are historically pretty weak, but for something this small, my space constraints mean that I, I really need to use something a little bit more delicate. Servo has been stuck down with some double-sided tape. I snapped on that ball end, and we're gonna do that to this one here. I'm just gonna try and eyeball it. Obviously, we have to have it hooked up to the radio to get this perfect. That's pretty close, I think. Now we are using one of these little servo centering tools. It's called a server. Server. Server test. Interesting. Ah, things that are lost in translation. Set this to manual mode. I don't want to go auto because it'll overextend, I think. So here we go. 
Oh, this is not good. Why is he doing this? Something is catching it, I think. Notice if I go to the left, it's fine. But to the right, oh, I see what's happening. The tie rod end here is rubbing on the arm, so I may have to just put a little spacer right there. I just trimmed off the corner of this little cap here and that did the trick. I wasn't taking into account these little rectangular ends on these, but did the design. But now we've got a bandit with steering. I think we need to put an ESC in now. My goal with this truck is to use these same 9.6 volt battery packs. And because of that, I would need to have a speed control that's capable of greater than 7.2 volts. And therefore I bought this. This is a 3S brushed speed control. It's uh, probably very overkill for this application, but nevertheless, here we go. WP104, wait, I've seen this before. I know I've seen this ESC before. Thunder Tiger Toyota Hilux, this is the 112 scale car, and there it is. I know I'd seen this. It has the same part number, this WP1040 brushed, but it doesn't say crawler on it. This one's, yeah, two to three LiPo. It just doesn't say this waterproof TE3 brushed ESC in this blank area. So this is nothing more than a contract manufacturer designing these speed controls and then somebody installing a custom decal, in this case, Thunder Tiger. Well, that's good. This has actually been a very good ESC, so I'm, I'm glad to see this. I got pretty lucky with this. I always like to use the car's factory on and off switch location, and in this case, it's right here. Unfortunately, this switch doesn't really have the necessary mounts, and I was gonna redesign some little bracket or something, but the speed control has to go there, and I discovered that if I stick the switch here to the side of the speed control with some VHB, that I can drop it right in there and check that out. It is right there. That was super lucky, so we'll just do that real quick. So one more thing I had to do before I installed this. I want this entire ESC to fit inside the electronics compartment and this is going to be tight. I measured the thickness of the ESC plus the tape and I think we're going to be incredibly lucky to get this to fit underneath here. I, I'm kind of of the belief that it's not going to, but before we tape anything down. Oh my gosh, look at that. I th oh my gosh, it actually... If this thing has a millimeter of clearance, I will be blown away, but it does indeed fit. Went ahead and bound the receiver to the radio that we've got here and just turn the car, is it on or off? Okay, so it's on now and let's, ooh. The servo's a little movie right now. It's because this is a little stiff and the adhesive needs it some time to actually uh, bind the servo down, but once it's stuck down, it should be pretty pretty stiff in there uh, We have to hook up a motor, but obviously we need a transmission for that What I want to do right now is kind of tidy this area up here and then prepare it by closing the lid on it So that we can move on to the final stage of this which is going to be the transmission So while we're sorting all the electronics, I do want to go ahead and add the Y splitter for the headlights that we're going to put in later. Attached the Y splitter. These will go to the light box through the front door of this, uh, this little enclosure here. And if you think this is getting messy, just wait. <laughs> we have a lot more wiring that has to be done. I went ahead and grabbed the Molex connector from the original Bandit Electronics. So this is the original connector that came with this car. We're going to feed these wires through the little hole at the back of this port and plug them directly into the ESC. And just for some nostalgia value, this is the original LED that used to tell you if the car was on or not. And we're going to put that right in there and wire it to the power output on the receiver so that when you turn the car on, the LED comes on just like it would have originally. We soldered in a 220 ohm resistor to compensate for the 6 volt source on the receiver. And then our negative line. The LED is plugged into the receiver, and let's just turn the car on. Hopefully we don't blow it up. Sorry, it's hard to see. This is not like a ultra bright LED that you would have had in the past. That's kind of uh, not so bright, but you know, it's the one that it came with, and that's what we're gonna leave. Well, the LED has been installed. It's just plugged right in there. Not particularly elegant, but it gets the job done. We'll just solder the leads on. 
All right, and here is our adapter, which I just realized the wires have to go through that hole. Well done. We shall attempt this a second time. You see what I did here is I'm, in order to get this actually wired up, I have to send the wires through the hole where they were originally. Okay, and you can see why I had to do it like this. I had to push the wires through the hole in the chassis. Now you might be wondering, did they do this to every single one of these cars when they were originally made? And the answer is no. What happened was the Molex connector had the little terminals already crimped and they just pushed the terminals through one by one and then just slipped them into the plastic enclosure and that was that. That is just about it. Now I know we have to wire the motor up and my plan is to actually route the motor wires into the electronics bay, but I'm almost positive that the motor wires have to go through something. So I'm gonna let this be for the time being. The thing we'll do is to just install the enclosure. I don't know if I'm gonna screw it down because it may have to come off again, but let's just make sure that this all still fits in there. And despite the quantity of stuff in here, we should get a good seal. It's fighting me a little bit back here because these wires are much thicker, but it, it is closing. It is absolutely closing. I'm just gonna leave it loose for now, but I do want to test out the 9.6 volt battery. I'm pretty sure it's charged, so we'll just plug that in. There is a selection here for LiPo or nickel metal hydride, and I want to make sure that it's set up to nickel metal hydride, even though this, what is this? This is a NIM, good. Uh, if it's set to LiPo, I suspect that with this much voltage, it will assume that these that the LiPo battery is dying. So we don't want to do that. Camera, this is plugged in. Let's turn it on. You all know how I like to videotape the, or record the explosions. Oh, this looks good. There you go. The car, as far as it knows, is running on a higher voltage nickel metal hydride battery. So that's fantastic. This means I can use this 9.6 volt pack. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I have been getting constant questions about the status of this project and it's, um, you know, it's slow, but the good news is the steering, the whole suspension design here was the worst part of it. The second worst was the electronic setup. Oh, that was my cat, excuse me. And uh, the last bit is going to be the drive line, which I don't think will be too bad, but then we have to get into the body. And I think that'll be another milestone, but then we'll be done. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned because the transmission is next and then we can actually do some test drives of this car. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Yeah.